Well, praise the Lord. As I was laying here thinking, <clears throat> I haven't felt good all day. I, you know, still got a cold and stuff, and but it's all right. The Father's taking care of me. But I got to thinking about the substance of this world and what's going on. Watching the news, seeing how our own president lied so much, deceived people, how um, I really believe that the Obamacare thing will <clears throat> cause our economy to totally collapse. Um, seeing more and more states okay marriage between same sexes at least some states are trying to pass laws to stop people from aborting their babies after a certain trimester but I I was thinking the heart of mankind has become so wicked and so vile that they really do think what is good is bad and what is bad is good. So many are saying there is no God. And if he is a God, then he's God of every religion. You know, let's just include him in every, every religion. And he's not. He's not the God of every religion. He's only the God of one. He was the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He was the God to Moses. Talk to him on Mount Sinai, even. He was God to Israel. He was God to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, for he was the Father. There's only one God. I, I'm sorry to tell you his name isn't Allah or or any of the Hindu names or whatever any other religion can call him. There's only one God. But People's hearts have become so cold and hardened, they don't want to accept that. They won't, don't want to acknowledge that this God that created mankind, you know, he took Adam and he molded him, made him out of the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils, gave life, the breath of life to him. And some were along the line. Our DNA relates all the way back there. And we often just look around us and we see no really hope, hope in this world nowadays. I mean, everything seems to be collapsing. Everything seems to be falling apart. Our governments, a war is soon coming over in Israel. I mean, an atomic warfare, not just a war, but one that we've never seen before in all of our lives. I mean, even when we dropped a bomb on Japan, that's just a small event of what's going to happen over in the Middle East. And stress. And in Revelations it says it's going to get so bad people will run to the caves and cry for the rocks to fall upon them. It'll be so stressful. 
people will die of heart attacks and they have on certain occasions because of so much stress and so much everything going on because as these tribulation times begin to multiply and grow stronger the people that are not strong at heart in Jesus Christ Yeshua will weaken and fall away their faith will wane for the cures of the world you know when Yeshua spoke of the seeds being planted and one of them was that the cures of the world would choke it out we are created with an empty spot in our heart and we in this world look for some way to fill that empty little spot in your heart. We all had it. We've all had it during our lifetime. I know I have. And you go on huge searches to fill that hole in your heart. Men search a, a woman to fill that hole in their heart. Women search out men to fill that hole in their heart. And then they get married and they find out that hole is not filled. They think, oh, well, now I have children. Fill that hole in my heart. And they'll have children. And they find out, though they love their children, they may love their mate. But there's still that hole there that is not filled. Some take drugs trying to fill that hole in the heart. Some drink booze to the time they just are oblivious to fill that hole in their heart. But let me tell you, there's only one that can fill that hole in your heart. Only one. And in John... 316 it says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish Yeshua is that key that has come and that to fill that hole in our heart that hole in our heart was specially made for a dwelling place for Yeshua HaMashiach to come in and dwell within our heart, within our life. Once you let him in and he comes in and he totally possesses, he totally fills that spot that was created from the very beginning for him to fill. You know, the Father God did that. Because he wanted you to know how much that he really, really, truly loves you. Now, you've got the atheists say, I don't believe in a God, you know, when I die, I'm dead, I'm gone, you know, the only time we have is right here, right now. That is a sad state of life. It really is. There's no hope. No foresight to see something beyond this life in an eternal life for them it ends right here right now in death so whatever they have whatever they accumulate whatever wealth or none wealth that they may find is all that they can see all that they can perceive and it never fills the hole of that emptiness in their heart even though they keep trying 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 I'll get more stuff I'll get more of this I'll get more of that you know it'll fill it eventually 
but it don't because it is designed for one purpose and one person to fulfill it. And they sadly go to their death with that hole there aching in their heart that needed to be fulfilled. And they never fulfilled it. And yes, they will see God one day. And then it will be a rude awakening. And then they'll know what that hole in their heart was about. But then it's too late. The time is now to understand there is a true God the Father God that created all things. There's one true Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, that is in total agreement with the Father, that they agree on everything. They are so much one in union of walking together that when he comes in and feels that hole in the heart, the Father comes in with him and feels it also. I think back on my life, on some of the things that's happened in my life. <clears throat> the hurt, the pain, the sorrow, the disappointments. The times sometimes I feel like I was on the mountain and the other times I think I was down in the river bank, down in the deepest water, drowning. The only one that could keep me and walk me through all of the stuff that would happen, through the sorrow, through the disappointments, through the heartbreak, through all of the things that seemed to torture, that made my life so miserable, I just, I just wanted to give up. But that one that lived and occupied that hole in my heart would remind me, I'm still here. I didn't leave. I'm still here. Listen to me. And I'll walk through you through this. I'll walk with you. I'll guide you. I'll help you plumb through whatever you're going through. I know about it. I feel it. I've suffered too. And I am suffering with you because I love you, Barbara. That's what he would say to me. I remember sometimes I would go out and I'd just go down in the woods where we lived and I'd just fall on my face and I'd cry. And I'd go, I don't understand what's going on and why it's going on. But I do know you're with me. And I can't make it through this unless I know you're with me. When times of death that I've lost people I loved, when there was times when I'd come to the brink of death and he would bring me back, When I'd hold a sick child in my hands, running high fever, and I couldn't afford to take it to the doctor, didn't have the money. And I'd walk the floor, cuddling it to my chest, and praying, and praying, and praying. And then feel the heat leave the little body, and and the baby relax and begin to nurse and 
and everything come back to normal. For he had taken care of my child when I had no one else I could depend on to take care of it. I realized <clears throat> That if he hadn't have been with me every step of the way. There are some things I don't think I would have survived. I really don't. It was just overpowering and overwhelming for me. To the point that I just, I just didn't think I could pick up another foot and walk another step. Physically or even spiritually. But yet he was always there, whispering very calmly and very softly in my ear, I am here. I will help you through this. You may not can make it through by yourself, but I can lead you, hold you in my arms, and bring you through this and I will set you on solid ground in a safe harbor to walk through again he's never failed to me ever not one time has he failed me when I called up on him, he always heard me and he always answered. When I was at the breaking point and I didn't think I could go on, he would lift me up and carry me across the thresholds of the mess and the mud and the junk of this life to solid ground. He would do that. Why? Because he loved me. Why? I don't know. He loved me. Was I perfect? Was I holy and righteous? No. I'm not perfect. <coughs> nor am I holy. And I, nor am I totally righteous. Although his righteousness covers me. That was his gift to me at the cross. He took my sins and he gave me his righteousness. Because my righteousness is imperfect. But his righteousness is perfect in every way, shape, no form. And it's that righteousness that covers me that when I do come before the Father, I can stand there and I can face Him boldly, knowing that the Son's righteousness, my Messiah's righteousness, covers me and protects me, even in the face of God Himself. It's nothing that I have done that has deserved this. Though I have tried to help many people. And may have done some good deeds and some good works. But yet it was nothing that I did personally. That earned that righteousness that Yeshua HaMashiach gave to me, laid upon me. Nothing I could have possibly done. No works, no deeds, no nothing. Although the things that I do do, I do to glorify Him and not myself. 
Because, you see, I am nothing. I have nothing. Everything that I have is given to me by the Father Himself to help minister to other people. Not for me to sit here and gloat in and say, Oh, I've got all of this stuff. But He gives to me that I can help others. Not to keep it selfishly. Not to use it in vain. But use it to glorify Him and bring the foal into the sheep pen where the Yeshua HaMashiach, the Great Shepherd, is at. It's not any works that I have done. Nothing that I have done is even worthy of life. But the one thing I do know, my faith in Yeshua HaMashiach and His grace is more than sufficient for me, more than sufficient to carry me through the bad times as well as the good times. It's not any of the work that I may have done or will do or could do, but it's by His grace, His love, His death on a cross, paying a price for my soul, my spirit, to cleanse me of all my sins, had made me even a little bit worthy. For it is His righteousness that covers me, nothing that I have ever did is worthy enough to present me to the Father. It's all about His works that He has done for me by carrying my sin away and giving His righteousness to me. A righteousness that I could never ever earn. I could work from the time I get up in the morning to late at night, but just before I lay my head down. I could work, give everything away. I could travel the world and, and preach the gospel, and I could do all of this stuff. But still, it's nothing that I have done that makes me worthy. Nothing. It is through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach and Him dying on the cross and Him taking my sins and giving me His righteousness that makes me worthy of anything. It's nothing I did, but it's all about what He did. Because He loved me. No one can love me not even my husband, not even my children can love me like He loves me. Nothing that they can do can save me and protect me. Only Yeshua HaMashiach is the one that can save me, protect me. His righteousness. We are in an evil world at an evil time. And right now we're only pilgrims down here. Walking through this path. That is of sin. That is all around us. That we see it and hear about it. All around us. Covering. And everywhere in a while our light will penetrate the darkness. And there will be someone that comes out and comes to know Yeshua HaMashiach and then he goes in and fills that hole in their heart 
And then they begin to walk on the path, realizing it's nothing that they've done. But by the love and the grace of the King, Yeshua HaMashiach, the High Priest of our soul, that lays His righteousness upon us, forgiving us and making us whole, as we can never make our own selves whole. When you come to realize that, and you let Him penetrate that little spot that was made especially from the beginning for Him to dwell in and fill up, once you realize that, once you come to truly know Him and you let Him fill that hole in your heart, the drugs are gone, the booze are gone, uh, the woman chasing or man chasing will quit. I mean, your life will abruptly change around because He came in and He changed it for you because we can't do it ourselves. It takes Him. I just felt strongly led to give you this talk. He fills that hole in your heart. If you're grieving, if you have a hole in your heart for any reason, and it seems to be growing, He can fulfill it. And then that peace that passes understanding will flow over your life like you've never known before. The things that you sought to fulfill that hole in your heart will immediately stop because it will be full of love and light. And it will be such a new experience that you will feel a high that you've never felt before. Even on your drugs, even on your booze, they cannot even match that high a peace of that peace that passes understanding that only He can give you. No drugs, no booze, no body, but only Him. He is the one that can feel that and give you the peace that passes understanding. So, just seek His face. Cry out to Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Give your heart and accept His gift. And accept Him into your heart tonight. And let Him bless you. As He's blessed me and so many other people. I could not have done any of this. It's Him that does the work through me. It's not my work. It's not me. It is Him. Father, bless this video for Your glory. Yeshua HaMashiach, let Your presence be felt in this video as people listen to it. In Your holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, THE Messiah, the one that is coming back to earth again to rule and reign. Let your peace flow through this video in your holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Christ. Amen and amen. The Christ means the Messiah.